Hi everyone, I want to make a quick podcast on recognizing unreputable sources and unreputable researchers in economics. The reason why I felt it's necessary to make a podcast on this stuff is because they could be real intellectual quagmires for the curious and well-intending student who's looking to do good and meaningful work. I personally consider myself as someone who was pulled into the quagmire of all this fringe material, and I felt it was necessary to have something out there just to warn people. This isn't a video to call out anyone in particular, but I want to make a guide for those who are uninitiated and just getting their interests peaked in economics and decision-making sciences. Now, before I continue, I just want to say as human beings, we should have mutual respect for each other. And we each only have one pair of eyes to see the world and one brain to process the information we're exposed to. So it's natural to see a wide variety of people who have different views on the same issues in general. So we shouldn't expect there to be a homogenous way of thinking about things. Regardless, I think horse blinders are sometimes necessary to become a productive researcher because most good researchers are specialists that have depth in a very narrow area of study. To help us all in our journey to become specialists, I present a few rules for identifying red flag material and red flag researchers. Again, I want to iterate that the goal of this podcast is to present a framework for how to distinguish what you should read and what you should not read or what research material you should consume in general if you want to go and develop in that role. So I have six rules here. Our first rule is if we observe disrespect for well-respected researchers. If we see someone that is going and ripping on or making fun of Nobel Prize winning economists, they probably don't know what they're talking about. So this is the first red flag you want to go and recognize here. The second one is that if we go and observe among this researcher or this material that's put, put out, um, clinging to one particular book as the answer of all things. This is usually manifests itself as people who are going and citing articles from the 1800s or, you know, the classics, right? And talking about its relevance to modern research. Um, you're probably with the wrong people there unless you're discussing economic history. Rule number three is appealing to the uninitiated rather than academics and researchers. This isn't a comment really to disrespect normal people, right? But if you're truly trying to do groundbreaking work, right? Which is, you know, the baseline assumption for why you wanna go and do research, you should be refining this work with smart people, right? You should be going and presenting it at conferences there, discussing it um, with other scientists. You shouldn't just go and release a book and go and give it out to the masses there. That's, that's not a way to go and do groundbreaking work. Rule number four is, um, this is just not really, uh, not really something that is materially based but more about the character of the researcher, this is just a rule for myself, you guys could again, disagree with this, is if you observe unrefined speech, right? If you go and you see someone insulting uh, someone else's ideas in a context of an academic presentation, um, right? Again, holding this in light of all these other things, um, it, they're, they're probably, uh, you know, not a good source to go after, right? There's a respectful way to go and debate ideas. And if they don't even have that demeanor, it's a sign of inexperience. Um, rule number five is that citing one author in the past as a source of superior information in the case where it has been ruled out previously by the academic consensus. Now, we see arguments by, say, Paul Samuelson and Robert Solow. And they were these were arguments that were fought by guys way back then and there were controversies and discussions in economics at their foundation that were discussed um really in the 50s 60s and 70s right but eventually the stuff was ruled out i mean you can go back and look at it if you're interested but this is not relevant information uh for us to be going and looking at if you want to go and be at the cutting edge um rule number six is that anyone claiming to present a whole new theory of economics is probably crazy. So I think this one goes without saying, because as a science, we want to build on previous research that is there, right? And there's a procedure for doing so. I think there could be more rules or some of these rules, uh, some of you guys will go and disagree with, but we should just remember that academia is a battle of ideas and coming out as a loser in this debate does not necessarily mean it's a bad thing, right? 
it's just part of making good ideas better, right? The problem comes when we think that these ideas which have been ruled out or been called irrelevant or have been disproven are still relevant. So I hope this podcast was at the very least entertaining, at the very most helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care.